Hey friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers at the Celebration Shop and today we are going to decorate beach towels. So we're going to use either, you can use your Maker, you can use your Explorer, you can even use your Joy. This is a really easy iron-on craft, um, but I want to take you into Cricut Design Space and I want to show you a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to show you full name and then I'm going to show you a way to make your own monogram shape. So let's hop over there and I'll show you what it's all about and we'll hit the craft table and put it all together. If you like what I'm doing here today, Today, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and I would love for you to subscribe and join me every week for new videos. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. So just from the home page, I chose to start a new canvas. And once in the canvas, I, um, I personally want to put my full name on my beach towel. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to create your own monogram shape. So let's start first with the full name. So I chose um, a very easy font. This is actually called Varsity. Um, and I use it a lot because I have boys and so they don't want anything frilly or frou-frou, but this font is really nice because it um, is just very clean cuts. Okay, and so then I personally wanted to do something sort of tropical um, because my beach towel is not bright colors. I wanted to put bright colors on it. Um, so I just went into images and you can search anything that your kids might be into or that you're into. I searched palm originally and so there's palm trees and things like that and then I found you know just a palm shape um, and so I added that and I added some fronds um, but I'm I'm loving how it's coming out and so I'm going to be using really bright colors like pink and bright green and yellow and orange but say I wanted to just do a monogram like I just or I just wanted to do the the letter K or if I wanted to do my full monogram so here's a little trick to be able to create your own let's take this one palm leaf we're gonna duplicate it so let's just move it down a little bit okay and I'm gonna make that larger just so we can see it we can always resize it um, depending on the size of your towel okay so now that we have this what I want to do is go into the contour tool and so for any shape that you choose remember contour allows you to eliminate things within the shape that you don't want so like I didn't want that centerpiece because I didn't want it to um, interfere with the shape I'm going to overlay onto it. Um, so I just took that out. So if you were doing a mermaid tail or if you were doing a whale or if you were doing um, any number of things, an alligator, and it had cuts in it that you didn't want to be there, you always remember you can use the contour tool and take those out. Okay, so now that I have my palm, and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit, let's go over into shapes and I'm gonna grab a circle. Okay, so let's take the circle and if I was going to do a monogram this would be about the size I think I would use okay so now what we want to do is I'm going to duplicate that circle I'm going to move it out of the way I'm going to grab the palm frond and my circle here and then I'm going to slice them okay so now see I can take out and delete that piece of the, the palm I'm gonna delete that piece and I'm going to delete that piece. Now this circle is going to fit in there. Fantastic. But because I don't want to overlay um, so much, I don't want to waste any material and I don't necessarily want to overlay my lettering on top of the circle. What I'm going to do is duplicate that circle and make it slightly smaller. I'm going to change the color just so you can see what I'm doing. So then we have shift and grab both of them and go up into a line. Here we go. And we're going to center them with each other horizontally and then we will do it vertically. So now I know that the circle on the inside is exactly in the center of the other. And then I'm going to go down to slice. And now I have, I can delete this one. And now I have this perfect frame. Okay, that's going to fit perfectly within the palm frond. Okay, how wonderful is that? All right, so if I wanted to do this, um, let's say I wanted to do this green, I want it to be the same color as the frond. And if that's the case, then why cut them both out, right? I could grab them both and weld them so they're now one piece. And then you can go in to um, text. 
Actually, I think you can go, you can go into text if you just wanted to get a letter, but you can also go into images and search monogram. This one. So I want to um, grab this one and for sake we're just going to pop that in so you can see what it would look like but basically you can go and get all those different letters and each of the placements are there so then you would be able to do that or you could go in to text and pick a font you liked and then resize each one to somewhat fit um, so that would work too but you could use this idea of having a shape and then overlaying a frame onto it and, and using the slice tool to um, make anything into a monogram shape. So you could do this with, um, if your child's really into butterflies or you know whatever the case may be, you can make your own right here in Cricut Design Space. Okay, but today I am not going to use this one. I am going to hide these and go back up and we are going to make this one. Okay, so there's nothing really to attach on this. So let's go ahead and select make it. Oh wait, we're going to use the Cricut Maker today instead of the Joy. So I wanted to change that to Maker and let's select make it. And it's gonna sort it out to our mat. So we have our yellow mat, we have our, I don't know why that's doing that. <laughs> there it is. Sometimes when I go to mat, um, it like only half shows up. So if you just um, move it around, it, it'll pop up in the right way. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't do that to anybody else. Okay. And so then we have our yellow, we have our green, and these are slightly overlapped. So see, when I hit the... There then they're perfect, not sure why that happens. And then here's my name. So now remember we're using iron-on, so we want to mirror each and every one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror Kim. We'll go ahead and mirror the palms, mirror that one, and grab that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll select continue. And now we can choose our material. So I'm gonna be using um, an everyday iron-on for these projects. And actually, I'm going to be using four different colors, but each and every one of them is everyday iron-on. If you have, um, like if you're using glitter for one and, and foil or something for something else, just make sure that as you get to that mat, you go back here and change your material. So we're going to select everyday, and we don't need anything in clamp A. We have our fine point blade in clamp B, and we're ready to go. Okay, so here we are on the craft table. Let me show you what we're working with today. So I have my beach towel, just a neutral colored beach towel. I have four different colors of iron-on, really bright choices, and these are actually called neon colors, these three. Um, and then I have my trimmer, and I have my weeding tools. I have my Cricut Easy Press, and I use, um, today I'm gonna use the smallest of the three. Well, not the mini, there's the really tiny one, right, that's the mini, but this is the smallest of the three machines and then I have a pair of scissors okay so let's move everything out of the way and I'll show you how we're gonna put the first of the colors on the mat actually really quickly before we get started with the mat I want to show you guys something so it's important to measure your towel or to know how large it is before you choose how big you want your design to be because you don't want some tiny little design on this really huge towel unless that's what you want of course right so for me I wanted a 12 inch design and so I think for this particular towel this is gonna work really well it's gonna be about six about five and a half, six inches. So it's gonna be tall um, and it's going to be long. So it's gonna be 12. But this towel is um, seven feet long, I think it is. It might be eight feet. I measured it before, but it's quite large. <laughs> so I think the proportionally that design will work well for this. So it depends on what size towel you're using. But just make sure that you use something like this. I use my clear acrylic ruler for almost everything. And you measure your design and make sure that you know how it's going to lay out and it's going to look awesome when you get done. Okay, so we're going to start with our yellow. And I need a very small piece of it. So I need four and three quarters by two and a half. And I'm gonna be using a standard grip green mat. So two and three quarters, and let's just see. So this is six inches long, and so that would be four and a half. 
So the nice thing about this is that I can measure it both directions and make sure that I have enough and plus I don't overcut. So I can just cut upwards if I wanna keep my pieces all together, and I do. And so then I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors and trim that off. And then that allows me to keep my pieces together. I just find that for me, it's easier. I do put them in Ziploc bags and things like that sometimes to try to keep the colors um, together, but it's just easier if I can cut it out and keep it together like this. Okay, so let's take that over to Matt. Now this is um, iron-on, right? So we are going to mirror and we want to put it face down. Okay, we can use our scraping tool and kind of put our material into place. And now we're ready to go over to the maker. The maker is gonna load my mat and go ahead and hit go. Okay, now it's ready to eject. And we'll go back to the craft table and do this all over again for each color. Okay, so here we are back on the craft table and I've cut out all four colors. And I just wanted to show you, I broke out my bright pad because um, I actually had to get classes not too long ago, reading classes, and I find that I really need to use them for my weeding as well. But the bright pad really makes the process a lot more um, simple. I'm not sure if you can tell this on camera, but with the bright pad, I can see all the outlines of the design and I can easily go in and get the elements without messing up um, the iron on or the, you know, the fragile elements of the pieces that I don't want to peel off. So I would recommend if you can't see very well, you might want to hop down and check out the bright pad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and weed out all the rest of this. I've gotten my name already and now I'm working on the palms and we'll get all of that pulled out and then um, we'll hop over to the easy press and I'll show you how to use that. Okay, so I've just taken my towel, laid it out, and I measured it again, wanted to make sure I found my center point, um, and I've just laid my ruler here so that you can see. Right here with the nine is my center point, and it lines up with the eye, and then I placed around it um, all of the elements that I cut out. The thing is, is we are going to layer this iron on, so I cannot just press it all at one time. So what I want to do is I want to, now that I have it exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to take it apart and just do um, the bottom elements and then we'll layer on top of each other. One thing with layering, you can layer every day um, and you can layer glitter on top of every day. You cannot put everyday iron on on top of glitter. It just won't stick because of the texture of the glitter um, or if it does it's going to come off pretty quick. So just know when you're layering iron on make sure that the glitter is always on top. Okay so let's kind of peel this apart and I've got my easy press um, heating up. We'll hop over and check out the guide to make sure that we have the right temperatures for the neon um, and the everything. Okay, so now the Easy Press is heated and I've placed the Easy Press mat underneath uh, my design and I left this element on just to make sure, you know, that I didn't have to like replace everything. Um, okay, so let's start with one element, light pressure for 30 seconds. Okay, so now we can remove the Easy Press and we'll flip it over and heat it on the back for 15 seconds just to make sure that it heat sets and then we'll move on to our next pieces. Okay, so now we have two elements in place and we want to put our first element that slightly layers over another. The thing is, is you want to protect that first piece. So you want to make sure that you've, you know, peeled this and it doesn't have the protective layer on it anymore and that your item is here with its protective layer and you're not um, allowing this to get under the new design because of course it would adhere to it. But you can overlay it onto a design just to protect it. Um, so let's make sure that we've got the whole thing covered. And my best advice is try not to reheat this if you can help it, but if you do, you have your protective piece. Okay, so now you can go ahead and peel it off. And I do recommend that you allow it to cool just because I think it adheres to the towel a little bit better once you, you know, let it cool and then slowly peel it away. Especially when you have something fragile like this, you always peel at an angle. 
um, and peel slowly. Okay, so now we're gonna put on the name, same process, and then we'll place this final element about right here, and we'll be done. Okay, so I hope you thought that was fun and I hope you'll decorate all your beach towels and I'm sure the kids would love for you to make them mermaids or whales or something really cool like that to go on their beach towel. And I hope you will hop down below and check out all the supplies that we used today. Um, make sure that you give me that thumbs up if you like what we did and I would love for you to subscribe. Okay guys, I'll see you next time.